Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a Banner Lords Faction Wars grade video where I provide an infographic showing individual grades for every champion in relation to how good they will perform in Faction Wars. So let's get into it. Alrighty, let's go ahead and pull up the Banner Lords here. I, I, I started with them because they are the first one in the index. I'm just going to kind of go in order, basically. And this is my first type of video like this where I dive into a, an individual faction and rank them for faction wars. So definitely let me know if you like this content, if you don't like this content, if it's helpful, if it's not, because that will determine if I go forward with this as a series and prioritize it, or if it's something I kind of put on the back burner and focus on other projects. So the reason I decided to finally dive in and, and do a video like this is because we got some news that faction wars is going to be significantly nerfed so it's going to be a lot easier for people to progress into the higher stages and and actually earn some decent glyphs faction wars i don't need to you know talk again about it and, and kind of beat the topic to death but a lot of people are not doing faction wars because it is just way too difficult even end game players are not able to get to the end and a lot of people are thinking it's just kind of more of a more of a pain every day than it's actually worth so very good news that it's going to be nerfed and going to be a lot easier to progress in those levels. So because of that, it might be time for us to really take a deep look and start preparing some of our Faction Wars teams. And I thought I would kind of go through every single hero and give you my perspective. Now, as always, with any sort of tier list or, you know, champion rankings or anything like that, it's not, it shouldn't be a be all end all type thing. It should be you know, used as a resource, as a, as a starting point to gather your own opinions, kind of like a launching pad. So don't, don't take my list as like some thing you have to go by. It's, it's not like that. It's impossible to make a perfect tier list. It's impossible to make a perfect grading list because no matter what you put, it can be argued with. So just use it as a resource in terms of getting an opinion from an end game player and kind of, you know, use it as a tool in your arsenal to form your own opinion. So with that being said, let me pull up the infographic here. This is kind of how I went through and ranked all the banner lords in relation to how they would perform in faction wars if they were invested in. Now we will see that Sathalia on the top left there, I gave her a B. Now typically if I were grading her as a legendary, she would get like a a D plus or a C minus or something. She's, she's not a very good legendary in terms of how she compares to other legendaries in the game. But for faction wars, our grading is a lot less harsh for legendaries because they let legendaries typically have better buffs and debuffs and better base stats. So they're typically going to perform better in, especially, you know, maxed out versus like rares and uncommons, typically not always, but when I was grading this, I did try to take into account the the difficulty of maxing them. So that's why some of these rares, like we'll see Valerie got a B plus. So I put her above Sathalia. And part of that is because of the utility that she brings while also being cheap to invest in. And we can, you know, farm her from the campaign to get duplicate skill books if we need. And I did try to kind of weigh the whole the whole thing in general, you know, cost of investment. So basically return on investment, uh, because obviously maxing out Sathalia is going to be much more taxing than maxing out the rare Valerie for a support. So it, this is kind of a good way for you to look and kind of see what champions might be worth the effort to kind of think about putting some time and effort in to, you know, start building your Faction Wars rosters. And uh, just some general notes here. Uh, that I'll kind of go over. I'll cover some of like the the better champions and the better um like budget champions. So while I'm on the topic, I'll go over Valerie. Valerie is a really good base level rare that you can actually get from the campaign. We got a good base speed of 98, and then we've got some utility here. Increase the duration of all buffs on all allies by one turn. So you would want her to kind of go last in your rotation after you place some buffs. You have her go and increase the duration of those buffs. We also have a shield buff on all allies. So some good utility for a rare and along with an HP in, uh, fa in Faction Crypts Aura. So I had to give her a B plus. That's kind of an example of a rare that would be easy to get consistent value out of for Faction Wars. And that's why she came out as one of the best graded rares at a B plus. She was tied by Chevalier. Being Void helps because your champion will never be weak in Faction Wars. You don't have to worry about that. So being Void definitely bumps you up like 
at least one, you know, tick on the on the uh, grading scale. Like in, instead of being a B, bumping up to a B plus because you're void. So 98 again, good base speed. And then uh, A1's not that great, but stun is very good in Faction Wars, and this is pretty good. We've got a defense-based character, so easy to get sustain. Uh, characters that are based off of attack are a lot tougher to get to survive. It's a lot easier to get champions to, uh, you know, if their damage is based off of their sustain. So champions like Tyrell that are based on defense and Chevalier, we can scale our toughness and our damage at the same time, which is always good. And stun is a very good debuff in Faction Wars on a three-turn cooldown. That's pretty good. We've also got an increased defense and continuous heal on all allies on a four-turn cooldown. So not incredible, but definitely good in terms of general utility for Faction Wars. The number one grade for the Banner Lords I gave to Raglan, and that's because we've got an A1 that hits three times and fills the turn meter of three random allies by 15%. That's a really good A1 to be constantly filling turn meters, and we don't have a counterattack champion in Faction Wars, so the only reason this would ever like mess us up is if we have like a counterattack team that really needed to go in a specific order. Um, I guess with Valerie, you would want her to go last, and this could potentially mess up rotations. So keep that in mind if you're using Raglan is, uh, you know, the the danger of messing up your turn rotations. But if you're not worried about that, this ability is amazing. And then we've got a constant buff removal and heal. And then we've also got revive in case somebody dies. And this is actually on a really low two-turn cooldown. And then to boot... We've got ally defense in all battles by a pretty decent amount of 33% and a base speed of 104. So what I'm seeing here is a lot of consistent and general, you know, utility on in multiple different ways to be very good in faction wars. So that's why Raglan kind of graded out as my favorite in terms of getting an A plus on, on that side of things. And, and yeah, I'll, I will have this graphic down in the video description for you to kind of take a look at and, and, and. Go over it and, you know, check your champions. Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with, and use it as a launching pad to kind of form your opinions for your banner lords in terms of putting together a team. And also, you know, like I said, definitely let me know if you like this type of content. If you don't like this type of video, that way I can decide whether to prioritize other videos and other infographics or work on other projects. So I would definitely appreciate your honest feedback. And yeah, sorry for the shorter video, but there's really not a whole lot to, uh, you know, cover in a video like this. It's it, most of the value of the video is based around the infographic and the, you know, quick explanation around the infographic. So yeah, uh, that's going to kind of do it. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.